From Nashville, Tennessee, Inside the Noise Podcast. With your host, Jenna Hyden. Here's Jenna. Hey, Courtney. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> so happy we're back. So happy. So this is like a bonus episode for the week because Taylor Phillips just released his new EP. That's so exciting. So exciting. It's called Six Strings Attached. It has four songs. Can you name all four songs, Courtney? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, nope. <laughs> oh, wow. I wanted you to like try at least. So... Rust in Peace, you knew that one. I knew Rust in Peace. Long Way to Heaven. Long Way to Heaven. You knew that one. Yes. For a Beer, you knew that Four one. For a Beer. <laughs> and then Six Strings Attached, which is the title. I'm pretty sure you knew them all, but you just panicked. I did. I really did. Oh, well. It's been a long day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the end of the day. It's Memorial Day weekend. We have wine. We have Taylor Phillips' EP. And it's super co- exciting. And um, we are going to share the interview we did with him. A few months ago, when he released Rust in, Pe- Rust in Peace, mm-hmm. and we sat down with him to talk about his new music. Yeah. And so before that, we're just giving you guys an updated intro, and Courtney is going to give you her Courtney cast on Taylor Phillips. Taylor Phillips has been a busy, busy man the past couple of months. Man, just in the past month, actually. So Taylor got married to a girl named Jordan. Super Ooh, cute. Jordan. Um, we ran into them one night, got to meet her. We were like, so excited to meet you finally. Um, so congratulations, Taylor and Jordan. Um, also, he just got a new Jeep. Wow, I'm Also jealous. super exciting. Literally, this is just this past month. How about a Jeep? And then today, he posted that he got another dog. So he releases EP, got Tank. a dog, got a Jeep, got a wife. Got a dog. And dog, like... What is what life? the heck? What is life? He is on Phillips? cloud nine right now. Wow. Living life oh, to gosh. the fullest. If you ever need a puppy sitter, Courtney and I are available. Yeah. For a minimum fee of $500 it's a tuck night. tuck and tank now, I think. <laughs> oh, tuck and tank. So adorable. Oh, we love friends. tuck. <laughs> Can't wait for tank. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we're excited about his EP. Um, we have a little game we're going to play. Okay. He's been, um, Taylor's been promoting his four beer song by having people say what they would do for a beer. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yes, that's okay. right. So I've seen a lot of it going on. He's had like a few videos on Instagram. Yeah, all over social media. Yeah. So Courtney, we're going to do a rapid fire round of questions. I'm going to ask you if you would do this for a beer and you're going to ask me if I would do this for a beer. Okay. Do you want to go first or last? I will go first. Oh, okay. Yes. Are you going to ask the question first or get asked first? I'm going to ask a question. Oh, Okay. Would you take a shot from a girl's belly button for a beer? Oh, good one, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> well, initial thought I was like, yeah, no problem. Then I'm like, who's the girl? How clean is the belly button? <laughs> is it an innie? Is it an Audi? What are we dealing with? You here? just have to say, would you? You can't pour think a beer. too much into it. So I get or a, a shot and a beer. Yeah, well, man. that's true. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I'm in. I get a shot. Of the tank. I get a beer. I'm in. There you go. Okay. All right. Okay. Your turn. Would you flash a bartender for a beer? Uh, <laughs> is that even worth it, though? I don't think so. Um. Oh, gosh. You know, I'm going to say no because I've got morals and a beer's only, what, six bucks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can. So I'm gonna yeah. s- I'm gonna say hard pass. Okay, proud of you. Yeah. Okay. Would you <laughs> Would you trade your Fitbit for a beer? <laughs> would you, Courtney? Would you trade your Fitbit for a beer? You see, I've never owned a Fitbit, so I can't answer that. But Courtney, would you trade your <laughs> Fitbit for a beer? No, I'd probably trade it for my whole bar tab. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if your bar tab is more than like ninety dollars, you're fine. But if you're getting free drinks at the bar anyway and you trade your Fitbit for a beer... I don't know what you're talking about anyways. I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, last question, Jenna. Okay. <laughs> Would you make out with a stranger for a beer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. There's like one I would and would not do for a beer. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that is true. Okay, well... We're going to get you guys right into this interview. It's super fun. Taylor sings us some songs. We play, can, we confess with him. We confess with him. We, he talks about his um, one song, Long Way to Heaven. Yep. And plays this Very rest sentimental. in peace. Yeah. Rest in peace. Plays rest in peace. And um, yeah, guys, just make sure you 
buy the EP, support mm-hmm. Taylor if you like his music. If you like us, leave us a five star review, not a one star. <laughs> So today I was looking at our iTunes reviews and I noticed we had our first one star. Mm. We got haters. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but that's okay. But we have some five star ones on there. So thank you. Yep. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Is it? I'm going to have to make a computer down at some point, but I just need to hear from most people. I probably need to sit up and act like so, a So, are both of you guys? Oh, yes. I'll put it in between you guys. Does that work? I can scoot close. Can I lean forward? Okay. There it goes. Watch y'all's mouse. Don't be cussing on my thing now. We're live. Oh, we're live. Oh, yeah, we're about to put the pressure on them, aren't we? Don't make her cry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, it's not there. Once people join on here. Yeah. Hold on. Let me make sure it connects. Confession. Oh, yeah, there it connects. Here we go. What up, what up, Facebook? <laughs> Hit the share button. We're about to do a little interview, and I'm about to let y'all tune in and watch this. As y'all can see, as everybody on here knows, I got a single coming out. So they're about to, this. These fine folks that are joining me are about to ask me some questions, so y'all are about to be able to witness some of it. You wanna do this? Cool. Here we go. I'll talk to y'all after a while. All right, are we ready, Courtney? Here, just flip the camera around. You wanna do some sound with me? Yeah, go. <laughs> okay. Here Ryan, we go. are you ready? Yep. All right, we're back. Welcome to Just For The Record. Yeah, we're really excited. We have Taylor Phillips with us today. He's a singer-songwriter, and he's about to release his first single. How excited are you, Taylor? <laughs> Pretty excited. <laughs> I think I'm more nervous than I am excited. Um, I can't say it's been a long time coming, but it's been coming for a little while now. So yeah. I'm just excited yeah. to get get a story out there. What are you more nervous about? Just having your feelings out there, or? I'm more nervous that my dog's gonna knock her. <laughs> Hook, get over here. He's just too cute. No, to say uh, come here, come here, buddy. We'll let him up here and answer some questions. Too. <laughs> there you go. Sit down. Um, I think I'm more nervous about the fact that, you know, just making sure that people relate to the stories that I've put down on paper and making sure that they love them as much as I do and just kind of getting the opportunity to tell that story, you know? Yeah. So your first single is called Rest in Peace? Rest in Peace, that's correct. Why did you choose that as your first single coming Man, out as an artist? I, you know, when I wrote that song, I wrote it with a guy named Monty Criswell, Adam Doliak, and Matt Roy. And when we wrote that song, we wrote that song... It's been over, I think it's been almost two years now since we wrote it. I could be wrong. It's been over a year though, and when we wrote that song, man, it was put on hold with a couple of major artists, and it just was one of those songs that was never recorded, and I, I always kind of fought with that. I was like, I don't understand that, you know? Because I've had songs that have been recorded that I'm like, man, I think that song's better, and it didn't work out, and I had somebody tell me not, not too long ago that that song was my song, and that's why it hasn't been recorded, so. That's why. It's about my first truck, man. Can't beat it. Yeah, it's a well, good feeling. What sure. kind of truck did you have first? Oh, Chevrolet Silverado. <laughs> oh, Chevrolet. Um, the best one Detroit ever made. There's a lyric in that line that Monty Chris Will had, and it's, it's my favorite line in any song that I've ever been a part of. Man, it just it hits home, and Chevrolet is it's just it's just me, man, for sure. Do you want to kick it off and play the song for us? Man. Right away. Right off We're just going right away. Man, y'all put me on the spot this <laughs> early into the game. I thought you were going to ask me questions. After. 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 That's when the confessions begin. Oh, God. <laughs> Good questions come. Confessions begin then? I'm nervous about that. Here, I'm going to scoot up a little bit, though. Keep my posture so I can get these lungs breathing. You know what I'm saying? One, two, three, four. Just dropped by to see you today Brought a cold six pack And a lot to say I'll catch a buzz off fire And pull one out for you They finally pay that road Out on Highway 8 And our Friday night boys Are headed straight for state I got a new truck But they don't make them like they used to I think I'll just sit here for a while So here I am 
Just a parking lot, some mud on a cone Street pipes louder than a radio And pretty girls pecked in tight all night Sneaking out for a ride on a bench seat Yeah, you're more than just my own Chevrolet You're the best damn truck Detroit ever made I sleep and lay to rest out in these weeds My old friend, Rust and Pete Back of your bed, I smoked your tires When the lights turn red, I kiss Maddie Ryan Laying on your hood And my hands on the wheel, and it still feels good Here's the parking lights and mud on the corn Street pipes louder than the radio And pretty girls packed in tight all night Sneaking out for a ride on a bench seat But yeah, you're more than just my whole Chevrolet You're the best damn truck Detroit ever made a sleep and lay to rest out in these weeds Well my old friend rust in peace oh, rust in peace well, I can sit right here in this front seat Go a million miles and never turn the key so here's the parking lots and mud on the chrome Street pipes louder than the radio And pretty girls packed in tight all night Sneaking out for a ride on a bench seat Well yeah, you're more than just my whole Chevrolet You're the best damn truck Detroit ever made I sleep and lay to rest out in these weeds My old friend, Rust and Pete Just dropped by to see you today Brought a cold six pack Had a lot to say I caught a buzz off five And poured one out for you That's my dog going there, Andrew Go throw him in the house Let's go throw him in the house Let's go throw him in the house that's on lot. You prop, prop that up over there. It's fine. What's the crazy? Sorry, my dog's just not being cooperative no. to this podcast. Just, we like him. Though. He's my buddy, man. I wanted him to be a part of everything, but he just doesn't know how to act right now. <laughs> I'm glad he's with us, though. What's he doing? Glad we got to meet him. Let's go him in like, his just cage. just love me. I know, man. He gets... I'm good, buddy. Thank you. So is that what inspired your tattoo recently? That is. Oh, yeah, That's the inspiration oh, behind this old Chevrolet truck I just got put on my arm last night. Looks really nice. It does look really nice. I didn't know what I was going to do when I walked in there. I just did it. I said, <laughs> you I said, I, I want a, a tattoo. I was like, man, I got a song coming out called Rust in Peace, so we might as well just do something with that truck. You know what I mean? I, I think it's great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Jenna, you nervous? You crying <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, it's okay. Everything's casual here. Everything is casual, hey, yes. Yeah. So casual. Okay. <laughs> So Taylor, when did you move to Nashville and like what was the start of your musical oh, journey man. here? Because I don't know that about you. Really? I don't know that. Well, you're about to learn something. <laughs> you're going to learn today. You're, you're going to learn. learn. You're about today. to learn. <laughs> well, I moved to Nashville in August of 2013, so I'm approaching five years here in this great city. Mm -hmm. um, long story short, there's a little bar slash nightclub in Raleigh, North Carolina called City Limits Saloon. And I was in school up there in Raleigh, and I was spending my Thursday nights and Friday nights there, sneaking in, watching uh, whatever country acts were there. Man, I just I just love country music, and I always have. It's always been a big part of my life. So I met a guy named Ricky Young and a guy named DJ Silver, and they were kind of like the the transformators, is what I would call them. They they, they made me come here. <laughs> no, they didn't make me, but I reached out to them, and they've always been great friends of mine, and still are. I, I had lunch with both of them today, and. It's really neat to just have those kind of people early in the game here because Nashville is a great, great city and it's a big little, it's a big little town is what I tell people. And if you is. connect with the right people at the right times, man, the opportunities are endless. So at my time, I'd met these guys and I went out on the road and started selling t-shirts for Ricky. I was doing some merch stuff and then I did some stuff with Craig Campbell and I did some stuff with Kelly Pickler out doing merch and 
there's nothing against anybody that does merch, but it just wasn't cut out for me. And, <laughs> I did merch. And, oh, yeah. yeah I, I, mean, a bit. That's a, I mean, I feel like it's a great foot in the door. It just wasn't cut out for me, I didn't think. I enjoyed it. but you Kind of behind just, the scenes when you're the, doing the merch. You're... Yeah, I knew I, wanted to, I knew I wanted to do something in music, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And Ricky was kind enough one day. He had started a song, and he kind of made me come to his house. And we wrote a song called Nothing, and he cut and recorded it and put it on an EP back in the day, back, back in, in 2013, <laughs> 14. That was the first song I ever wrote, so that oh. was really inspiring to be able to say the first song, you know, put it on iTunes, and to see people react to something that you've put, that you've written, it's really neat, and it, I just fell in love with it. And at that point, I just started writing every day, twice a day, three times a day sometimes, just if I had an idea trying to find somebody that would write with me. and. Like I said, it's a hard town, so everybody doesn't write with you, I promise you that. Yeah. I remember many times trying to write with people and they didn't want to, but now it do. comes full circle. <laughs> now that now that a lot of people want to write, so it's it's fun how that works, man. So it's cool. That is really exciting. Because this city I mean, the city's so big and there's so many talented people For here sure. that, you know, you just like you said, you got lucky with I, I connections mean, you made and I tell people all the time this town's ninety percent who you know, five percent talent, five percent luck. Yeah. And I, yeah. I'm a firm believer in that. There's plenty of people in sitting in a basement somewhere right now that can work Pro Tools and work work a guitar and write songs are great, but the networking aspect of it is just as important as the talent part of it, and I, I'm a big believer in that. I spent many nights down there at Loser's Bar uh. now. I, I can promise you that. I've gotten really good at networking and drinking beer sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, we saw you at Tin Roof Revival not too long ago mm -hmm. with Michael Ray and yeah. people. Yeah, yeah man. Um, so my buddy James Travis Dawes, as some of y'all, some of y'all know him. He, uh, I love that guy, and he asked to put a round together. So I reached out to some friends, and it's pretty neat, man. I've never played a writer's round with somebody sitting right in my face. <laughs> yeah. standing in, <laughs> I'm like sitting down, anyway. standing in my face. I'm yeah. like, hey, how y'all doing down there? That was crazy. That was a lot of fun. I'm actually looking forward to doing that again soon. Yeah, it's cool. Does that ever make you nervous, like being on stage and oh, yeah. having all these people yeah, surrounding sure. you with cameras? And I, I absolutely, and I feel like the thing that gets me through it is that I've, when it comes to writing songs for me, I've always been able to put my story and make what's relative to me, put that on that paper. So I feel like that's the thing that gets me through the nervousness because it's not like I'm sitting up there telling a story that I haven't lived. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if I was up there trying to put on a show to put on put on a different sing a song about something that really wasn't me, then I feel like I would be more nervous. But absolutely, it's, it's definitely nervous. It's just like riding a bike, though. I tell people, I'm like, you take that first pedal and you start going in a good direction. I mean, once you start, it's easy to go, but it's just that starting point, yeah. for yeah. sure. I get, I definitely get nervous, for sure. Why country music? What desired hmm. you to get into? Man. What song inspired I'll you? I'll tell you, my mom, when I was young, um, I remember Alan Jackson, the Chattahoochee. I, <laughs> what a I song. Mean, I it gets you, harder than a hoochie. I tell you, I wasn't even old enough to know what, I didn't know what Chattahoochee was. And that, until recently, I didn't know Chattahoochee was really a river in Chattanooga. But, <laughs> I was going to say, we both can from it. Yeah, honest, yeah. I, mean, I don't yeah. know about it either it's anymore. Crazy, it's crazy what <laughs> Google will do for you. Yeah. Um, I remember singing that song, man, when I was a kid. and. Another one, which just I just wrote with them, and I couldn't believe it, it was John Michael Montgomery sold, um, and the Grundy County Auction. I mean, everybody in the world's heard that. I mean, those are two big impacts. Eric Church, mm. I just wrote with John Michael Montgomery the other day. What a guy! That was that was a milestone opportunity and one I'll never forget. That was really neat. It's just to see things come full circle, man. Um, you told me five years ago I sat on his bus and wrote a song with him. I told I told you you've lost your mind. <laughs> but you know, I mean. I just, the opportunities are, they're endless here. If you work hard. Yeah. yeah. I'm a believer in that. For sure. Well, what other song would you like to play for us? Man. On our podcast. We're going to be on the spot again here. <laughs> so I'll tell you. I'm very thankful for music. Oh, um, man. I'll try not to get all sad on y'all. Um, I love sad. Jenna cries all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so we're good. <laughs> my uncle, my uncle Bradman passed away last August, a week before my birthday. And mm, sorry. You look at life. I'll tell you, I'm not trying to get all sentimental, but it's probably the podcast that you weren't expecting. This is about to get kind of sad, but 
you look at life and you take life for granted. And for five years, I've been away from my family. Um, I miss my, my little nephew's first birthday party, you know what I mean? It's like the sacrifices that you make to come out here and tell a story and to chase a dream. And people, a lot of people don't see it. They're like, oh man, he's got a number one song, blah, blah, blah. He's done this, he's done that. But like, in reality, like you move, you move everything you've known. Mm -hmm. And you come to this town and, and you fight like crazy to to chase a dream. And I'll tell you, one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do is say bye to my Uncle Brackman on a FaceTime call. Mm -hmm. And when you look at life like that, it really is an eye-opening experience because tomorrow's not guaranteed. And one of my last memories with him, I went back home and me and my mom went up there to have dinner with my cousin, she was like, come see Uncle Brackman. And I was like, I don't really know if I want to see him yet. You know, like, he's had cancer. Last memories that I had with him, he was healthy, he was, he was good. And we just went and rode around. And just to hear, like, how happy people are about life. Like, mm -hmm. to hear the life experiences from a man like that, who's just a simple, just a simple old man, you know? And he ran a produce stand and back home. And I just wrote a song about it. And, my only, my only wish was sitting at Warner Chapel when I was writing this song with Matt Roy and Brian Carper and Adam Doliak was, I just hope I get to play this song for him before he passes away. Yeah. So I played this song on a FaceTime call. And if you look on the back of my guitar. I saw yeah. that before. There's He's a FaceTime. Pictures on his and there's a his screenshot. Wife. And that was the last time I ever saw him. Aww. So I got that with me. And if you look right here, there's a slingshot. Cause he made me a slingshot right before he passed away, oh, and he gave it to so me. Cool. It's on his strap, on his So guitar. it's on my arm too. So everywhere I go, Snapchat. he's with me, and he's he's with me because of the person he is. But he's also with me to remind me, you know what, life's short. Yeah. Be good to people. Yeah. So I wrote this song. It was a pretty much a prayer to God that day. It's called Long Way to Heaven. So we FaceTime for a little while Wishing I was by his bed The last time he said I love you God, I wish it was in time For you to take him But God, I hope you take him Sweet cantaloupe, yeah, God, I hope, I hope you take him down that door, riding shotgun in his truck, drop that tailgate down and let them be, run down one last buck, let them whittle down some dogwood, shoot a can with his slingshot. Somewhere along the way Cause I died of being in the backseat Of that old Chevrolet 
While you take him down that dirt road Riding shotgun in his truck Drop that tailgate down and let them beagles run down time for a little while Wishing I was by his bed The last time he said I love you Thank you Oh, that song get me Is that a hard one to play? Huh? Is that a hard one to play? Man, I played it at his funeral That was so hard, that was pretty hard oh. That was hard, but I mean I feel like he's with me though, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean I look at it from the positive side. I try not to get choked up. There is times where it hits me harder some days than it did, than it does others. So it gets me a little bit. I will say it's probably best that you weren't like by. I watched my grandmother pass away, so it wasn't like the easiest thing because they're they're not really. It's not really them, like you said. You know, you want to have oh, those yeah. good memories of him. So you're exactly right. Man. I almost cried. <laughs> I was like, I am not going to cry on this podcast. <laughs> Hold on to it. We can make it fun. Man. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can get into confessions if you'd like. Confessions. Confessions. Okay, yeah. Is this the Usher's part of this? Yeah. Usher's part three. Usher confessions part three. We'll lighten it up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So each week we're called Just for the Records. We do off the record confessions where you say something like embarrassing or weird about yourself <laughs> that you want everyone else to know now but it's off the record so it's off the record I don't want it to be on the record no, I'm I don't really have that man I'm pretty oh. I'm telling you I'm pretty straight up dude I mean you, you kind of know me enough to know that I'm, I've always been pretty honest man uh, do you want to yes. hear ours and then maybe you can kind of like go off of that do I know like listen to ours and see if maybe you can yeah let's hear yours okay. let's hear your own on yet, so please tell me yours first <laughs> Well, I did have one, and then I sent it to her, and she goes, I hate it, so this is what I have to do. <laughs> so that's a with. terrible confession. So I will confess, on Saturday, I was really gross. I hadn't showered for two days. I didn't have a bra on or anything, and I just, like, sat at home all day and did nothing. That's, that's your confession? confession. <laughs> oh. I'm a gross human being. <laughs> Sometimes. What's yours? No, Tell them yours, man. To think. <laughs> no, we, you already told us what yours hey, was. What was yours? I didn't have one this week yet. No, I told that one on the first week of the podcast that I don't the watch. Confession this week? I gotta confess about something this week. Yeah. Or no, I mean, no. Really? Well, we just confess every week because we do the podcast every week, so it's hard for us to think of new ones. Yeah. Well, like, I'm about to pretend like it's just my confession this week, too, then. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, my confession this week I'm scared Colin's hair is gonna steal a show. <laughs> I'm, play it. I'm, uh, I'm nervous, man. I gotta play a show Wednesday with Jacob Bryant, and I'm. I'm nervous. Oh yeah, you're Exit In, uh, which yeah. this will air after, but is that your first time playing at Exit In? That is my first time playing at Exit In. I'm nervous about it, too. It's a really cool venue to play. I don't know, man. I'm just nervous. Yeah. I'm just, I mean, it's just nerve-wracking. Yeah. This is kind of like your debut as an artist instead of this a songwriter. In Nashville, it really is my debut as an artist. Yeah. Because yeah. you've been writing songs and... It's wild. Now you get to put your own vocals thought, to your own story. Years, four and a half years, who would have thought? I wouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, so that's yeah, my that's my are. confession. Hey, you've gotten yourself in a really good like class coming up. Like you you have surrounded yourself with really good people. I hear your name all the time on Sirius XM. Well, I'm you, talking about you. you. Thank you, Stormy Warren. <laughs> yeah, he's like that. I've been, Taylor, I've been he's like that. Stormy's been talking about has, a little bit on there. He's like that. Taylor Phillips is coming up, one of the most talented songwriters. Man, thank you, you Stormy. <laughs> I hope you get to hear this. Stormy, baby. <laughs> that's awesome. Too, uh... <laughs> that's very cool. He's a great guy. It's awesome. That makes me that yeah. makes my day. Yeah. Good. Right. Stuff like that'll make you stay here. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that'll make you stick and stay around Nashville and keep writing songs. That's awesome. For sure. I like it. I don't have any other good confessions this week. I forgot to bring a toothbrush. I went to St. Louis this weekend, so I didn't brush my teeth for over 24 hours. Oh, my God. I can't do that. It was really... <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do that. <laughs> He's like... Come on, yeah. you're in this too, dog. You ain't had to say, no, what's your confession for the week? Yeah. yeah. Confession for the week? Oh, I don't know. Um, 
You're in a Canadian tuxedo right now. I, okay. <laughs> hey, I just okay. bought a denim jacket and I love it. And Mario just I, called. He said denim, denim, denim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I stole Kool Aid from Kroger on Saturday. No. Oh. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Don't do that. Why? I'll call me next time. I'll give you twenty cents. <laughs> <laughs> it was more of like a, I bet you won't. Oh. Yeah. What flavor? And you had to. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, I'm ladies sorry. and gentlemen, don't leave no bags of sugar. <laughs> it will be gone. <laughs> I'm gonna set the record straight. Oh yeah, we can do that next. So we also set the record straight each week with questions we get. So Courtney has some questions. And they're kind of like out of this world weird questions. So I'm like, yeah. So I'll do my best to answer. Okay. Um, <laughs> should I start off with that? <laughs> Probably not. I'll wait until later. Save that one at the end. Okay. Okay, this came from Jenna. Is it okay to stop for coffee even though you're already <laughs> running late to work, or does it make you look worse walking in? So, like, if you're already late to work, but you go get coffee. Oh, yeah, you definitely look worse if you stop for A hundred percent. Does it make it better, though, you if bring you bring one boss? to your boss? <laughs> and you're still late? I don't know. That's risky. If, don't someone should have of, late. if you don't know what kind of coffee he drinks or oh, she shoot, drinks. You're right. That's true. You bring them the wrong coffee, that's a double-edged sword. Double yeah, you know. that's true. That is a okay. random question. <laughs> so that is not okay. Jenna, did you do that? No, I do Clearly, like. Clearly, she didn't No, up. our office is right by Starbucks. So what I do is I go, I set all my stuff in, like log into my computer, put myself up on a little like in office I am. Sneak out of there. Right <laughs> and then I shut my computer screens up and go to Starbucks. <laughs> That's awesome. My boss listens. Lucky, I was gonna say, I'm me, here, there, at Warner I Chapel, see. where I'm song, where I'm signed at with my publishing deal, we have a Starbucks machine. Wow. So you don't so, have to go. I'm gonna come work That's at nice. Warner. Yeah, so I just walk out of the writing room and I go over there and give me a nice lay down cup of coffee. So you can never. I really don't get coffee. I get like a thing of milk and sugar with a with a side of coffee. <laughs> I'm big on black coffee. It's, oh yeah. Yeah, it's pretty light. You don't like creamer in your coffee? I'd rather throw whiskey in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, we're doing some that. We're doing sober March, so I can't drink that. We'll see how long we'll make it. I bet you we make it twelve days. How long do you think we can make it? Sober March. Sober March. You've seen this out. Sober before. March. <laughs> After seeing y'all out, um, I'll give you about 12 more hours. Yeah, I'm more you. 12 more hours. 12 more hours. No, maybe not. 24 more hours. I'll send it more hours. <laughs> that's how this town well, is. You say, see. that's how this town is, though. You take it, you're like, I'm not drinking today. And then somebody calls you. Then you're out of the bar. You're there. Mm -hmm. And someone buys you a drink and puts it in your hand. Yep. Yeah. They make you do it. And then you just happen to drink yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a drinking town with a music problem. I feel like that's Jenna's my problem. She's like, <laughs> no. we're getting another shot. Do you ever go downtown and hang out? It's my favorite place to go. Okay, that's. I was like, Jenna, are we weird that we're locals and we go down there all the time? I love we, going to Broadway. It's my favorite. If you're we, ever in Nashville, Facebook Live, Broadway's the spot, man. I love Nashville. We used to never go, and then we lived recently in the last year taking a life into it. Yeah. Like every weekend. Yeah, I love it. It's What's your favorite bar down there? Oh. Uh, Top three. Whiskey Row is pretty cool. It is yeah. cool. I like Whiskey Row, I like FGO House. I go to Valentine a lot. I like Valentine. Right. It's kind of the escape of country music. Yeah, yeah it is. Because everywhere else has got country music, so you sneak in there and you're like, okay, I can get a breath of fresh air. I like their rooftop too. Yeah. So cool. that's cool. Yeah. All right, other questions. <laughs> Is it okay to wear the same workout pants two times in one week? Yeah, if you wash them. <laughs> but what if you don't wash them? I have another question. <laughs> So I have a big problem with workout clothes. These are a lot of sanit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I have a big problem with workout. Well, the last one you're gonna be like, what? I have a What's big, the last? Let's hold on, hold on, let's just, hold on. I have a big problem with workout clothes because I teach kickboxing, and you can see through every pair of pants that they sell to girls. Do you notice that as a man? I don't notice that as a man. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't notice that. Good. What's you the shouldn't. last question? I'm gonna hear the last one. <laughs> I told you this is explicit. No, it can't be explicit. <laughs> it's, not like, it's not bad. It's not bad, I promise. Okay. Is it okay to have sex in the back of your truck during the day? No. <laughs> have you ever it's never done okay. it? No. What about at night? No. Have you ever done it at no. all in your truck? No. He's not just not gonna answer because he's <laughs> No. I don't believe that. <laughs> he knows he's lying. I'm <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, that was an awkward question. That was a very awkward question. How do you feel? I'm oh, fine. That's all. <laughs> Is that the closing question for this podcast? No, it's not. No. Thank no. you for setting the record straight for us. You're welcome. The record is straight. We need help on those things. Drop yes. the needle on the vinyl. It's straight. No coffee if you're running late for work. Yep. No. No wearing no. workout pants no. twice. No truck bed. And yeah. no truck. Yeah. Yep. I like it. Okay. 
Jenna, what would you it? like to do next? <laughs> is that it, Jenna? She's a little nervous. Are we still. doing one more song and we're closing this thing out? Yeah, let's do one more song. Right, tune this old guitar. Tell the story behind it. Who you wrote it with? Oh man, let's do a let's do the half hat. Um. So if y'all get on Spotify right now and go to Kane Brown. My buddy is one of my best friends. We wrote a song called Found You Together with a guy named Rockberry Hill and Jared Mullins. And I think it just hit 20 something million. It's got like 20 something million spins on it. I think it's about Dang. to I think it's about to go sell like 500,000 copies and it has never hit the radio. It's pretty cool. Pretty neat, That's man. pretty cool. That is really so cool. this song's called Found You. Hope y'all like it. It's just, my name is Taylor Phillips. <laughs> and I'm out after this. That question, no more awkward questions. <laughs> We're looking at more right now. So <laughs> Y'all sing along. Okay. I was sitting at the same old bar. Breaking on a broken bar stool Wishing she come running back Running from the past Running up a tab Drinking for two But that night my boy showed up Drug me out on the town Had to pick me up Never known what I was missing If they did Cause I'd have never found you At a random house party That I didn't even want to go to The way you moved Had me first time Sometimes the finish line is just the start of something new If I'd have never lost her Then I'd have never found you I'd have never found you Never found, never found you Yeah, I still go out sometimes But I don't ever try to get that drunk And now when I can't sleep It's cause you're all over me in the sheets All night keeping me up yeah, it's hard to believe that a goodbye could be so good to me No, I'd have never found you At a random house party that I didn't even want to go to The way you move Had me first time feeling in a while I should make one too Sometimes a finish line is just the start of something If I'd have never lost her Sometimes the things that don't work out Couldn't work out any better Cause I'd have never found you No, I'd have never found you No, I'd have never found you Had a random house party that I didn't even wanna go to The way you knew Every first time feeling it on how I should make one too Sometimes a finish line is just the start of something new Same old bar, heartbreaking on a broken bar stool. Wishing she come running back, running from the past, running up a tab, drinking for two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kane Brown, man. It's my buddy. Thank y'all so much for having me here. Yep. It's a wonderful podcast. We have to. <laughs> well, thank you for taking thank you, the time. Yeah, thank you for coming. Well, absolutely. Um, I really appreciate anytime. it. Anytime. You got your single coming out on March 9th. March 9th. March 9th Is that going to pre-order? No pre-orders. I'm going to just, I'm just going to. Just going to put it out. Just going to let the storm hit on March 9th. All right. Man. So March 9th, everyone can download it on iTunes. iTunes. Spotify. Stream on Spotify. It'll be on Spotify, Google Play, Amazon. It won't be in Best Buy. It might be like in a local Walmart <laughs> if my mom burns a CD. We're going to burn CDs and hang it on the street. Just burn some Rust in Peace CDs. Throw it on the shelf somewhere. I'm going to throw on every single <laughs> old truck I see. There you go. Yeah, any old Good truck. Old truck Anybody you see with a truck, man, that looks like it's ever seen a dirt road, just throw it in there. Throw it in there. I like it. Cool. And where can people follow you? TD Phillips 2. 
two L's. TD Phillips two on Instagram, yep. Twitter. Yep. Same thing. Well, cool. That's it. Okay, and we sign off each week. You want to explain to them how we do this? So I say her name, she says mine, but you have to say your own. <laughs> okay. I don't know why that Taylor became Phillips. a thing. <laughs> but we, we, say, for it. we say just for her, this has been Jenna. And Courtney. And Taylor Phillips. That's it. That's it. Thank you so much. Let's go see what Facebook Live has to say about this. Thanks, Taylor. Awkward questions. <laughs> Can't remember. The people are mean on there, but.